The word adventure is defined as an unusual and exciting, typically hazardous experience or activity. Many of the risks associated with adventure travel cannot be managed well, such as accidents, illness, or an unforeseen ice storm in a Rocky Mountain Pass. Actually, the latter one was manageable. Uh, I found out later that Wolf Creek Pass actually has its own weather forecast. And had we decided to take advantage of that, we would not have had the experience that we had in June of 2019. But many other things can be anticipated and can be corrected before they even become a real issue. So that's going to be our five tips for today's video. I have a routine of every week or so of going through my credit card statements and my bank statements to ensure that all the transactions that posted were authorized and accurate. A few weeks ago, I found that somebody had accessed my credit card, one of my credit cards, and decided to make some purchases in London, England. That was a bit of a surprise and a little bit of an inconvenience to notify my credit card company that these were unauthorized charges so they can correct the problem and send me a new card. So imagine the scenario that you walk into a hotel after a day's travel. You're tired, you're looking for a shower, maybe you didn't get a hot meal. You plop down your piece of plastic on the counter to pay for the hotel room, and the clerk tells you that your credit card has been declined, or your debit card has been declined. And you find out that somebody has drained the cash from your checking account by using your debit card or maxed out your credit card. Now, although there are safeguards in place to ensure that you're not going to be responsible for these transactions, in the short term, you've got a little bit of a problem. So when I travel, I have a system to address those possibilities. Number one, I have my primary money clip where I carry my credit card, my driver's license, and cash. A few hundred dollars to pay for a hotel room or a meal in the event my credit card or debit card gets compromised. And I also carry a separate money clip that's not actually on me, that's stashed away someplace nice and secure. So if somebody hijacks my credit card numbers or I lose my billfold, I'm not stuck out in the cold, literally. And in my extra money clip, I carry an extra government issued ID card, some money, and a credit card that I only use as a backup when traveling. I don't use it as a primary, so the odds of it being compromised are very slim. So why do I carry an extra government issued ID card? Well, you're not gonna be able to get on an airplane without one. So I carry the small passport ID card. When you apply for your passport, you can either get the book form or the small card form. Now the card is typically only gonna be uh, able to be used in traveling uh, to uh, Canada or Mexico, if you're a U.S. citizen, that is. It's not good for traveling much beyond that. So you need the full book passport, but it comes in handy as a backup form of identification. Another way to protect your credit cards is to use a product that is known technically as a Faraday cage, commonly referred to on your website, such as Amazon, as a electronic security pouch. This is something that prevents RF uh, radiation from getting through the pouch and preventing people from scanning your credit card information right off the card and then cloning your card and charging items on your account or using your debit card. These products are as cheap as about $10 on Amazon and they're pretty effective. You can also make your own Faraday bag. Basically, you would take your credit cards and wrap them in aluminum foil. That will typically prevent most RF readers from getting through them. I actually practiced that using uh, the clicker on my uh, car key and going out to my car, unlocking my door, then simply laying a, uh, a layer of aluminum foil on it and pressing it, nothing happens. Which brings up another tip. Nowadays, almost all motor vehicles use a transponder key and you have a clicker which sends out a Bluetooth signal to unlock your door, set off the alarm, open the trunk, what have you. It's entirely possible that somebody could actually use an RF scanner and copy the codes on your key or your clicker to gain access to your vehicle. If you use a keyless 
uh, starting system. It's entirely possible they can clone an entire key in front of your house uh, or in front of your hotel room and steal your vehicle. That would make for a pretty bad day. So my strategy from this point forward when I'm traveling, that not only do my backup credit cards go into a Faraday cage, but so do my car keys or spider keys at the end of the day. The next tip is to have a spare set of keys. I personally like a hide key on my motor vehicle. That way, if my keys get lost or stolen, I can still access my motor vehicle by accessing the hide key and then using that to get into uh, the vehicle and start the vehicle and continue my trip. Now, the, the transponder keys are pricey. If you have to get one for your Spider, you may have to go to the Spider dealership and they're gonna cost you about 80 bucks. And don't forget, if you use a hide key on your vehicle, make sure you place it in some sort of RF uh, container, such as aluminum foil or some other uh, Faraday cage type product. Now, in the past, I did a complete video about hotel room security, and I preached about not leaving anything of value in your hotel room. The only problem is, if you're traveling, you're the, your only other option probably is your motor vehicle or in a hotel room safe. Um, I have trust issues. I like to be in control of these things. I don't know who has access to those hotel room safes, so I like to bring my own safe. And no, I don't have a humongous thing on rollers. What I have is one of these I picked up from Amazon. Now, to be able to find one of these, you're going to have to look in the section, uh, and you got to be careful with which words you use on YouTube because they will demonetize you, but this is a device that's designed to hold a one of those things, and although I do not use it for that, I do use it for a hotel room safe or in the motor vehicle or in the spider because it's made of hard steel. And yeah, with enough tools from a toolbox, you can probably gain access to this, but most thieves are not going to do that. Now, what makes this nice is it comes with a steel cable, a nice heavy duty steel cable that you connect to the box from the inside. You seal the box, then you can wrap the cable around something secure. If you're in a hotel room, you could wrap it around the bed frame. Uh, in your vehicle, you could wrap it through one of the seat belt harnesses or the frames for one of the seats itself. And that way you have a secure device or a secure box inside either your hotel room or your motor vehicle so you know that the stuff you put in there is going to be there tomorrow morning. Uh, this one has a combination lock on it and it's pretty steady. And it even meets TSA standards if you're inclined to fly with a in your checked baggage. So, handy little tool. Next tip is how to stay safe from cyber criminals. In today's world, it's a growing problem. It's beginning to eclipse the actual old-fashioned break into your car or break into your hotel room and steal things when they can sit outside in the comfort of their own vehicle and tap into your computer, tap into your smartphone, and get all the information that they want to get off of it, such as your phone number list, your personal information, your financial information. And if you're one of those people who pay by phone, that's even possible, they can access that information also. How do they do that? If you use public Wi-Fi, there is a risk that somebody can hijack that information. That's why when we travel, we really don't like to use the hotel room Wi-Fi or the restaurant Wi-Fi unless we absolutely have to because we're in a zone where your smartphone simply can't get a signal. Um, I actually like to use my smartphone and I connect it wirelessly to my laptop so my laptop has internet connection anywhere I can get a cell phone signal. And the speed is typically pretty good in comparison to what you might get from your hotel room or from your local coffee shop. So the likelihood of cracking the code to gain access to your smartphone from the smartphone system is pretty small. It's more likely that somebody can gain access to your devices from hotel room or coffee shop Wi-Fi. Well, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. If you have any suggestions of tips yourself that you use uh, for your travel, uh, or if you have any requests for ideas or things you'd like to see us cover, please put them in the comments below. We always like to read all the comments. 
and Miriam should be home from work soon. And tonight is our night to sit in front of the TV and watch our favorite folks on YouTube. Yeah, besides being content creators, we are YouTube junkies ourselves. So until next time, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment below.